Good morning, everyone. It is my honor to present the very first award this morning. And my name is Mary Ann Walk. I'm the Deputy Lab Director at Idaho National Laboratory and a C3E Ambassador. So I get to present this year's C3 Award for Social, Economic, and Policy Innovation. The award recognizes scientists, researchers, and practitioners working at universities, national labs, or in industry who are researching and analyzing how technologies, economics, public policy, equity, and decision making interact to affect the adoption of clean energy. This year's winner is Dr. Jackie Ashmore. I'd like to congratulate her on receiving this award. A few words about Jackie. She is a clean energy and sustainability expert and leader with 15 years of experience in the business technology and policy realm. She's currently the executive vice president of engineering at New Leaf Energy, leading a large engineering team developing solar energy storage and wind projects, serving this corporation as it grows to develop a, a gigawatt of renewable energy annually. Prior to this role, she co-founded the Boston University's Institute for Sustainable Energy. Here, Jackie leveraged her knowledge of technology, research, and innovation to build institute programs that interfaced with external stakeholders. The institute's record included having 63 affiliated faculty members, 19 senior fellows from outside BU, 48 reports and publications, and 80 events, just lots of stuff. But one of their big accomplishments was developing the carbon-free Boston reports. They used real-world data to bring new knowledge and insights to the City of Boston's Climate Action Plan of 20, 2019 update and the overarching goal of reaching carbon neutrality by 2050. But that's not all. Jackie is deeply involved with the New England Women in Energy and Environment, or NUI, I believe. Is that how you pronounce it? Thanks which works to elevate the voices of underrepresented women and drive greater diversity, equity, and inclusion in the energy and environmental fields. Recently, she organized Nui's mentorship program, carefully pairing women mentors and mentees for a six-month program, and over the last two years, more than 50 mentor-mentee relationships have been created. Jackie is passionate about building inclusive, equitable, and a clean energy future for us all. She serves on the boards of three nonprofit organizations that have missions to expand the involvement of underrepresented groups in the energy and environmental communities. She continually works to identify where she can have the biggest impact on the clean energy transition and how she can support others in pursuit of that goal. So congratulations on the 2023 C3E Social, Economic, and Policy Innovation Award, Jackie. Okay. Good morning, everybody. It was great to hear from Sally Benson to start us off, and thank you for your kind introduction, Marianne. It's a tremendous honor to receive the C3 Award for Social, Economic, and Policy Innovation, and my congratulations to all the other 2023 awardees. Also, a big thank you to Martha Broad and everybody at MITEI, as well as the whole C3 organization for supporting this wonderful symposium. As I thought about what I wanted to share with you today, I reflected on one powerful aspect of the Barbie movie, namely how affirmative it is for women to hear not an airbrushed version of each other's stories, but a candid version, including when and how we struggled. That is what I think made the mom's central speech from the Barbie movie resonate broadly with women. So here are a few brief vignettes, including challenging moments from my career journey so far. And I hope that they elevate ideas about ways to find support and resilience for those of you who are seeking that, and prompt reflection about ways to provide help and encouragement to others for those of you who can do so. 
So going back 20 years, <laughs> I had just finished my PhD in engineering. I was really proud of making it through, but it had taken substantial tenacity to do so. And I definitely had a lot of scar tissue after spending five years in an environment that displayed some hostility to women. I was really conflicted about continuing in academia, but I also found it really difficult to find people who could help me work out non-academic pathways that were viable. And if someone had told me then that I would be standing here today, I just would not have believed it. Five years later, I had found a foothold outside academia, and I was actually about to move into the clean energy sector. On the family front, my husband and I had our first child. At that time, I had far greater exposure to the view that the only way to be a good mother is to stop working outside the home than I had to accessible role models who were working mothers. And so I was, and I am, so fortunate that my husband, Deepto, who's a real feminist, was deeply confident that we could have a happy family while we both pursued meaningful careers. And he's never given up on making that a reality. By the way, Deepto is about one of three guys, I think, who's joined us here today <laughs> in the back. <laughs> So fast forward another five years, bringing us to 2013, 10 years ago. And at this point, uh, we had two daughters, age five and under, and we generally found ways to balance family and our careers in ways that worked for us. However, my job was really overwhelming and I was burned out. My belief that problems always crumble in the face of persistent effort just wasn't playing out well. And at about this time, I had a serendipitous encounter, as it happens right here in Kendall Square, that reconnected me to Jan Schubert, who's the director of the Center of Women's Entrepreneurial Leadership at Babson College, who I'd first met a couple of years earlier. Jan became a coach for me, and that was a game changer, and she's continued to be a mentor for me over the years. Along the way, I became involved in NUI, recognizing that being part of a mutually supportive network of women who looked out for one another as they encountered professional opportunities and challenges is consistently invigorating for me. Women from NUI, as well as some of the C3E ambassadors, became a core part of a network of energy and environment professionals with whom I exchanged knowledge and ideas, feedback and support and inspiration. And eventually, I realized that my network included collaborators who were also sponsors advocating for me when I was not in the room. And that was also a game changer. So today, I feel really fortunate to be part of the incredible New Leaf Energy team, accelerating the transition to a world powered by renewable energy by developing solar storage and wind power across the US. On reflection, I am aware that it's been more difficult for me to advance in my career as a woman, but equally, I recognize that I have a vast amount of privilege that has played in my favor, too. And so I regularly ask myself the following questions. How can I help a junior professional find their way into a clean energy career that they aspire to? How can I help participate in the support networks that help working parents live balanced lives? How can I be helpful as a mentor or as a sponsor to a colleague, especially in moments when somebody's encountering a tough challenge? And most of all, how can I direct those efforts to help people who are underrepresented in the clean energy transition in particular? I don't have complete answers to those questions by any means, but I do hope that, that by sharing them with you all today, it helps in our collective effort to drive an equitable clean energy transition really fast. Thank you so much, and I believe I'm handing over to a panel moderated by Emily. Thank you.